Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday work for November the 25th. Our theme is More Than a Conqueror, Possessing the Land. If you want to know more about our ministry and our schedules, you can go to our website, williamsinnovativenetwork.org. You can follow us on Twitter, Win With Christ, or you can go to our Facebook page, Williams Innovative Network, and join us for our daily updates. Our scriptural theme for the year is found in Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then Genesis 15 and 7 said, he also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. And our scriptural theme again for our theme for the year is conquer and possess by continually renewing your covenant with God. And today's subtopic is make the commitment to receive the declaration. And I'll be reading from Genesis 20, I mean, um, 17 verses 23 to 27. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you today for your power, your anointing. Lord, help us to align ourselves with your word and your truth of truth. And we ask you to speak to us today and help us to be able to walk in that knowledge and that understanding and the revelation of your word. Empower us to be your people, your way. In Jesus name we pray. Starting at verse 23, it says, And Abram took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abram's house, and the circum and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And Abram was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son and all the men of his house born in the house and brought with money of the, of the stranger were circumcised with him. So let's just jump right in. The first point I want to make is take your steps to complete your promise. And that's found in verse 23. Abraham didn't wait around. He didn't go into a big discussion on why he should or shouldn't do this. He didn't, you know, just try to figure out, you know, an easy way to do it. Because, you know, let me just pause right there. Because oftentimes God will tell us to do something. And we're trying to find ways of soothing our flesh so that it don't hurt so much. You know, God could tell us to step away from relationships. And we'll try to figure out a way to slowly step away without just cutting it completely off or sometimes the lord will tell you to step away from some sin or some condition or something you're doing in your life and we try to figure out how to soothe our flesh so that we can ease away instead of simply cutting it off at the time that god tells us to do however abraham didn't wait you know um scripture says he took every male in his house and he circumcised them uh, when we make a covenant with god we should immediately move toward fulfilling our promises when we make a covenant with God through Christ, we should do we should begin to walk in the way that our that has our heart circumcised. So from the moment of salvation, we should be seeking God, how do I walk according to what you've called me to do? How do I live that way? Now, I don't I don't expect the new believer to know that. That's where the believing body has to come in to make disciples and and in fact, even as I was having prayer with someone today i just began to weep because i said lord forgive us as a church because we haven't been making disciples we've been making church goers and god said make disciples and the way we make disciples is they should look like christ's disciples and if you don't know what a disciple look like go to the word and see he said signs and wonders should call follow his disciples he said there's some things that should follow his disciples if they're not following the disciples that means we're not doing a good job so we have to repent of our part but now we need to help people step in so they can complete the promises god has for us the second point i want to is bring others to the place of promise we see that in verse 25 abraham was not only willing to be circumcised he he was ready to bring his son um it's key for us to understand we should not only want to go in and possess what god has for us but we should be willing to and 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 eager to bring our children along as well the promise for Abraham was that his seed would be required to do the same thing, that his seed would be required to be circumcised. And it's important for us to bring our children to the cross. 
We should teach them, live right before them, give them the opportunity to be in a right relationship with Christ. We have to bring our children to a place of promise. They're not going to necessarily want to go, but we got to bring them. How do we bring them? We bring them in our ex in, in, in our example. So if I'm living a shabby life before uh, my children, they're not going to want the Christ that I talk about. And too many times, if they're not seeing the power, I'm realizing that this generation, if they're not seeing power, they're not really all that excited about God. Not not the way we would want them to. They see so many other things. They see the enemy's hand real clear in the world. This generation needs to see God active in our lives. And is it that he don't want to do it? I believe he does. So again, it's a matter of us going before the Lord and saying, Lord, forgive me that if the power of you is not showing to my children, help me. Because when they see the power in me, that will draw them to you. The next point I want to do is um, exceed the promise. Uh, and what I mean by that is from verse 27 is Abraham didn't stop with his son. He called all the men, whether they were servants or not, and he circumcised them all. And, you know, somebody could say, well, that was unnecessary because there weren't really his seed. But I, I, I see this as really an example for us to say that even though God has given me a promise, a land or something that he wants to offer to me, I should not only offer to my children, but I should be so excited that God is offering it to me that I should exceed the promise and then and then offer the promise to somebody else. That I should be willing to share that promise for a life to a person that's de that has not yet seen what God ha can do. In fact, it may seem even kind of foolish. Why are you doing this? But because I have had that encounter with God, see, Mo, I mean, uh, Abraham was there before God. He was able to see him and to, to experience the glory of God. And when you experience the glory of God, you should want to be willing to share the promise with everybody. So what's our life lesson? If we are to conquer and possess the land God has for us, we, we must be willing to do our part to receive the blessing and then include others in the process. See, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're at this point, where we're talking about possessing something that God has for you. And I just want to do a re real quick recap. First of all, we talked about you have to take the right position, the right position in prayer, the right position in um, your attitude, the right position in humility, the right position in trusting and believing, and even the right position in terms of how you handle what you hear and what you receive with God. So we have to take the right position and, and it starts first with us humbling ourselves before God so we can hear God receive his message clearly, walk in it, and then do what he's called us to do. And then the other thing that we talked about is, is I've got you covered. God is willing to cover us. That's part of what that covenant relationship is. He's going to cover us. We're going to, our sins are forgiven. We're covered under the blood. And, and that means that we walk in that power and authority that God has given to us, but we have to do it with a humble heart and a mind set up to do what the requirements are because so many of us want to receive the blessings but we don't want to do the requirements so god wants us to do what is required of us so that we can walk in those blessings and then our covenant with god should touch our family it, you know if i'm blessed then there's some some godly relationships that god wants to to bring in to this covenant that he's given me. There's some godly partnerships that I have to make, whether it's the husband and the wife, whether it's an entire family, whether it's with God's people in the church, whatever it is, the promise that God wants to bring out in our lives that we have to partner with the right people. I say the right people. We have to partner with the covenant people that God wants us to covenant with. And then finally, today was to make the commitment to receive the declaration. When God has declared this over your life, then you have to make the decision to do what he's called you to do, be about doing it. But then in the process, you're going to take your steps to complete the process. So you have to do what needs to be done in you. Then you have to bring others to the place of promise. So it's this, you get saved. Now, who are you going to snatch? When God snatched you out and made covenant with you, who are you going to snatch? Maybe it's saying, start first with your sons and your daughters, but then exceed past and go past just your family and reach out to a dying world. I hope this has been a blessing to you this month. 
And, and we look forward to you joining us again. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for your blessing, for your word. Now, Father, just have your way in us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to do these things that you caused. Help us to align ourselves with your promise and walk in the promised provisions that you have for us. Help us to be obedient and to humble ourselves and, and to seek you and to and to turn from whatever wickedness is in our, in our hearts and our lives so that you can heal our land, so that you can do what you require of us and we can possess what you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.